just joined, I'm going to be recording. So if you would like to keep your cameras off, you can feel free. If you'd like to turn them on, you can. But just a warning um, in regards to that. Also, um, I've enabled Q&A. So if you'd like to put some questions in the chat, um, or sorry, rather in the Q&A section, you can feel free to do that. That just allows us to kind of keep you know, track of your questions as we go through the presentation and then answer them at the end if any of them aren't answered by that time. Um, you can access the Q&A section by clicking on the symbol with three shapes. So that's the triangle, square, and circle right beside the chat button. So if you click on that, you can enter in any questions that you may have initially or just during the event as well. Dr. Holmwig, I'm not sure how much um, time you're thinking that you might need for your presentation. Would you like to give um, students another couple minutes before we begin? Or sure, I'm more? in no rush. And okay. my, my okay. comments are very short, so. Perfect, okay. So then um, with that, yeah, we'll just maybe allow for another two minutes and then we'll get started. Okay, so I see some people are still um, trickling in. I appreciate everybody's patience. Um, again, we'll probably just allow for maybe one more minute or so. Um, we just want to make sure that we can capture as many people as we can live, um, and then we'll begin the session. But again, you can feel free to put questions if you have any in the chat box or in the question and answer area. Um, also, if you're just joining, we are recording the event just to make sure that we have um, captured everything if students aren't able to join us. Um, so feel free, if you are comfortable, you can turn the camera on. If not, um, feel free to leave them off if you'd like. Um, my name is Nadine Duchuk. I'm one of the academic advisors within the faculty. And joining me today is Dr. Hornwright as well from the faculty. Um, and we'll be beginning in just a couple minutes. Okay, Dr. Horner, how do you how do you feel about getting started? Perfect. Okay, sure. wonderful. So again, um, welcome everybody um, to the capstone and thesis information session. Um, we're going to be starting now. Um, I appreciate you all joining us today on such a lovely evening. Um, I know the weather's looking great, so I really do appreciate you spending the time with us today. Um, I hope everybody's doing well and enjoying a little bit of a reprieve from the winter term. Um, this evening, we're going to share with you some important information about capstone and thesis. 
Um, and while we proceed through the event, um, we ask that you, again, put any questions that you may have in the chat box or you can feel free to put it in the Q&A section of the Google Meet. Um, we're going to do our best to answer all those questions throughout. And if not, we'll definitely have some Q&A time at the end of the session to answer all the questions that you have. Um, and then we also ask that just for the duration of the presentation that you keep your mics off. Um, you guys are doing a great job of doing that now, just so that way we can make sure that the audio um, comes through nicely um, as we are recorded and just so that nobody has difficulty um, listening to any of the information. So thank you so much for that. Um, and with that, I'm going to share my screen. So bear with for one second. Wonderful. Okay. So again, welcome to the Capstone and Thesis Information uh, Session. This is for uh, not only our nuclear engineering students, but also our health physics and radiation students as well. Um, today we'll be covering, again, some information that will be pertaining to your fourth year requirements. Um, my name is Nadine Duchuk, and I am one of the new academic advisors within the Faculty of Energy Systems and Nuclear Science. Um, and I'm looking forward to meeting all of you personally um, in the months ahead. Um, joining me is a face that you're likely more familiar with, um, which is uh, Dr. Daniel Hornweg, um, and he'll be sharing information related to capstone and thesis as well. Um, for those of you who may not be familiar with Dr. Hornweg, he is the Associate Dean of Faculty of Energy Systems and Nuclear Science and an Associate Professor within the faculty as well. Okay, so again, the information session will be facilitated um, for capstone and thesis and will be done in two parts. Uh, first, I will provide a brief overview of thesis and capstone um, and some logistical details such as prerequisites for capstone or thesis, um, how to apply and how to register. Um, then Dr. Hummel will take it over and provide um, a high level summary of the capstone and thesis for you as well. Okay, so um, you might be wondering what is capstone? Um, capstone is a fourth year program requirement within the nuclear engineering program. It is completed over two terms, um, so students in our nuclear engineering program will take uh, Nuclear 4994U uh, Capstone 1 that occurs in the fall as a group capstone, and then you will take Nuclear 4998U Capstone 2, um, which is scheduled in the winter, and that's an individual capstone. Um, both courses must be registered in and pass in order to complete capstone. Um, it's also important to note that uh, through completion of the design, uh, you'll demonstrate um, an understanding of the of engineering design process um, and basically demonstrate your ability to apply it. The lecture time scheduled um, for capstone or, or for thesis um, is required, but the tutorial and lab time are more of a space holder in your schedule that you and your group and or supervisor can work together within. Uh, there is no teaching in the tutorial lab, so that's just something to note as well um, as you go through the capstone. And then for those of you in health physics and radiation science, um, thesis is a fourth year program requirement within that program. Um, it is completed also over two terms. Um, so instead you'll be taking RADI 4995, uh, Thesis Design Project 1, um, and that will be taken in the fall. Um, and that'll be followed by RADI 4999, Thesis Design 2, which is scheduled in the winter. Um, again, both these courses must be registered in and passed in order to complete um, thesis. And then also in regards to these particular courses, uh, lecture time again is scheduled in the fall only. So just note that you will have lectures to complete at that particular term. Um, and students are required to attend the lecture while you're going through the fall semester. The lab and tutorial courses sections um, do not include teaching. So um, rather than having to go to those, they are just simply a, a place and time holder, if you will, in your schedule that allows you to um, meet with your group and work on your thesis if you'd like. Okay, so we're just gonna briefly go over requirements. Um, students must complete all courses from year one through three as prerequisites for both the capstone and for thesis. Um, if a student is missing courses um, up to about three, I would say is the maximum, uh, we still encourage you to apply or we encourage them to apply um, because within the Faculty of Energy Systems and Nuclear Science, um, if you are able to finish the missing courses by the following fall semester when you'd be eligible for capstone or thesis, there is a possibility to be considered for those options. Um, also, um, if there is a likelihood, though the likelihood, sorry, 
of being approved um, with three missing courses or lower um, kind of diminishes your chances. If some of those courses are, for instance, a first year course, or if some of those missing courses are liberal electives, um, then we would recommend that you would take the courses over spring summer if they're available, um, just to reduce the amount of missing courses that you have prior to taking capstone and thesis, and you may be provided with a conditional approval. So in all cases, we do um, encourage students to apply just to see um, if they are eligible or not for the capstone or thesis. So you might be wondering, how do you apply? Um, so for either capstone or thesis, um, students must complete an application via Google form. Um, that Google form link, it was provided in the capstone thesis invitation email that you received, um, but we'll also post that in Canvas. And um, just shortly after the, my part of the presentation, I'll be sure to put that in the chat as well so that you can access that and bookmark it um, for future use. Um, so just know that you do have to make sure to apply through that Google form and you should apply prior to May 16th. Um, it's also important to note that decisions will be sent to students in about mid-June. Um, so that's when you will likely get some information or some decisions back to you. Um, and it will let you know um, that you've been approved with ample notice so that you can actually go ahead and register for the applicable courses for fall and winter um, while you do the rest of the fall of winter registration as well. Okay, and just in terms of registering for capstone, so a few things to note there um, are is that shortly after you are approved for capstone or thesis, uh, the academic advising office will add an approval to your account to allow for enrollment uh, for either capstone or thesis. Um, we do ask that you kindly wait for that decision to be mailed to you. Um, if you register early and you haven't received that decision, or if you register, um, you know, too quickly. Um, after getting that decision, then unfortunately you might get a registration error, um, which kind of slows down your registration process. So we do ask that after you get full notice that you've been approved, that you go ahead and register for the courses, um, capstone or thesis if you have been approved. Um, also, just to let you know, you can add uh, the capstone and thesis courses yourself. So you won't have to do any type of special registration process or fill out any forms. Um, you'll simply add those particular courses um, as you would any other courses for the fall and winter terms. Um, once you get an approval from us. And you can do that registration through the My Ontario Tech Portal, um, only my campus, through the Add Drop section. And again, I just think it might be helpful to highlight a few scheduling notes. So um, something to notice, uh, or to note rather, is in the Health, Physics, and Radiation Science program, um, students will have a lecture scheduled in the fall term, um, but not in the winter term. Um, lab time will be scheduled, but again, students do not have to physically attend those labs. Uh, the purpose of the lab and the tutorial sections are to simply provide a weekly structured date, time, location uh, for your group and uh, to meet and for yourself to collaborate um, on your capstone and thesis project. And then just lastly, if you have a lab course section of capstone or thesis and there is a time cap conflict with some of your other courses that are required for your program, um, please let the academic advising office know. Um, again, if it's a lab course section, then we can provide you with the time conflict waiver to allow you to register in your other required courses um, so that there are no issues with making sure that you complete your mandatory um, fourth year courses. So that pretty much concludes the advising uh, section of the presentation. Um, I'd like to now just hand it over to Dr. Hornwig to give you some additional details about capstone and thesis at this time. Great. Well, thanks, Nadine. So, so yeah. So, welcome. I mean, uh, one of the things about capstone and thesis is that um, it's supposed to be a culmination of of um, of your entire life at Ontario Tech. Um, so, ideally, it should have a you know you should be using at least three or more of your courses in in the capstone. The the specific aspect of capstone um, that is the most important is the design component. Um, it's where basically you get to try out being an engineer, um, and the topics will be will be um, selected that they'll have design components in it. So um, a couple of questions that we get um, you know often is. Uh, what is the difference between capstone in FESNIS and capstone in, in, in FEAS? Uh, one of the things that we have in, still in capstone um, in FESNIS is that we have a weekly lecture. Uh, it's just an hour. 
Um, there's an exam, but it's easy. Um, and a lot of the lectures are, are guest um, speakers. And it's really to emphasize this issue of, of safety, uh, indigenous issues, some of the things that are harder to fit in in courses uh, where um, uh, nuclear power fits within climate change, these sort of big, broad issues. So that's, I, hopefully the lectures won't be too, won't be too boring. Um, it's not too onerous, it's just an hour. Um, and again, the exam, the exam is fairly straightforward. Um, so, um, and, and that's the deal I can make with you. I'll, I'll make sure that they're uh, reasonably, reasonably entertaining and, and, and I'll bring cookies. Um, now, the big question that everybody has always is the topics. So we don't yet have the topics. Um, I can tell you who's who's um, coming up with um, capstone topics. It'll be professors Harville uh, and Froats and myself. Uh, we may we're also looking to have a integrated um, topic this year, where uh, hopefully three nuclear engineering students and three electrical engineering students, and the topic will be um, SMRs uh, and the closing of Pickering. Um, the impact that that's going to have on the electricity grid in Ontario, um, designed for for uh, resilience and 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 enhancing enhancing the electricity grid. Um, I hope to have the topics up, and I'll have to figure out if if Canvas isn't open up yet, we'll we'll email the topics to you one way or another. Um, this year, we're really asking that you have uh, if you want a topic that you try and, and get yourself into groups of, of five to six people. And we know that getting into groups is, is sometimes a pain, especially during the summer, especially with COVID. Um, so maybe this, so if, if you can create a voluntary group of five to six and you have a topic that you like, just contact the, the professor whose name is next to it and say, hey, um, this is the topic. And then once you do have a group, um, establish among yourself one spokesperson for the group, and that's who I would suggest that you have, um, you can copy everybody, but have one person email the professor. Also, I think uh, both, well, all the professors, myself, Harville, Froats, um, are, are, are pretty keen on having weekly meetings for the capstone. So it's up to the, the team to set those, you know, to, to schedule those meetings. So you want to be able to, to um, just email the professor and then make sure you get it. Uh, we don't know yet exactly how things will be in September. We're assuming they'll all be back in person, um, but we'll be able to handle either eventuality, even if, uh, you know, or maybe a hybrid, some, some online meetings um, uh, and some in person, obviously. Um, one of the so the other differences between capstone in Fesnes and Fias is that we tend in capstone two try to set it up so that each of you is writing your own uh, report so that it's your uh, report. Of course, you you have to do it in cooperation with your other teammates, but it's your report that you can take to a uh, interview. And we're finding that uh, we've got feedback already from, oh, I don't know, 20 or 30 students that have got jobs based on their capstones. Um, so it is, it is something to have that's your own, that you can say, yeah, this, you take it with you to an interview or email it to them you know, as, a, as a PDF or whatever and say, this is what I did. And so it's quite helpful to have, have your own uh report but of course again linked with your your teammates and um generally all of you would meet um as a group once a week um the way we'll likely do it this year is that in the fall um you would present your uh capstone at the end um and we'll get a group of a group of professors and maybe some people from industry and we will mark those uh, your presentations and then in the end of the winter we will likely do the same thing again, where you would have a poster session um, in the atrium of the ERC. Uh, this year we had it in the evening, well, from 4.30 to 6.30, 
and then we handed the zirconium rings um, at the at the end of of that event, and we had um, oh I don't know we had well we were kind of COVID restricted, but we still had fifteen people I think from industry. Now I don't know is there anybody on la, uh, online tonight who's in radiation science, health physics, radiation science? Well, if this is being recorded and someone's watching. I believe, not 100% sure, but I believe that's Dr. Nikita who has the group. Uh, it's a similar process, but the difference between a capstone and a thesis, a thesis is typically associated with a Bachelor of Science and it's, um, it's more focused on research. And a capstone is more focused on designing design. Basically, design a problem and designing a solution to the problem. Uh, so some previous uh, topics were um, designing a fish farm um, at uh, Darlington with the waste heat. Um, we've had, and so just to sort of wet your appetite, perhaps for the topics that are 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 coming to fruition, and I'll try to get those to you, depending on when I get them. Um, likely next week, but we will have something about um, uh, SMR design and community acceptance would be one. Uh, I think Dr. Harville has one on decommissioning, uh, maybe Pickering. Uh, Professor Froats has one on um, uh, reactor design. Then there's the one about the, the um, electricity grid in Ontario. We will probably have one on um, designing a designing the nuclear component for a country in I don't know maybe you who the the group can choose their own country but it'll either be in Africa or Asia so you would have to look at um, what's required. There was a really good one a couple of years ago with uh, Dr. Bresnai on looking at um, designing a. Um, nuclear capabilities for um, South Australia, um, which was quite interesting. Um, I think that's that's the, yeah, the highlights, the, the, all the key points. So again, the one thing to remember when you're coming up with a topic, thinking about it, or if we come up with the topic, is to really emphasize the concept of design. That's the capstone and research for the, um, the thesis. Um, Carrie? Do you want to give them any insight as to if they had their own project, um, how they would go about um, proposing that, or if that's a possibility? It is a possibility. One of the challenges that we've had, we've, we've had topics quite often from, from people who have internships at OPG or Bruce Power. The one thing that we're going to require now is that any topic um, does not require an NDA. Um, because by the time the NDA gets gets in place, it's usually the, the whole term is escaped. And poor Professor Froch, not this year, but the year before, spent just an inordinate amount of time between lawyers at OPG and at Ontario Tech. And it, yeah, so, um, so yes, you're welcome to come up with your own topic um, and um, yeah, and just present it. Any questions? Anything else, Carrie? Um, how many? Can I ask some questions then? How many of you would do work over the summer if you knew your your topic in the next week or two? Just raise your yeah, raise your hand or or put in the chat if you would or you wouldn't. And and this isn't a Nobody's keeping score or marks or anything. I'm just curious. Okay. I'd start if I got my topic soon. I'd get a okay. good start. Okay. Yeah. Next question I have for you. Okay, so we'll get the topics to you before the end of May. Uh, somehow. Next question I have for you. <laughs> so we get lots of comments. Some people hate uh forming their own group some people love it 
sometimes we've done it arbitrarily. Sometimes we've done it voluntarily. Um, one of the points for the whole thing about having a team is that, you, you know, from here on in, basically everything that you're going to do at an engineering level will be within a team. So you kind of have to learn how to work with others when, you know, somebody doesn't do the, the work or doesn't show up and how all that. Um, but do people prefer to pick your own teams or to be arbitrarily assigned to a team? Make your own, Mark, okay. Pick own, prefer making own, make own. Wow, okay, so nobody wants to be arbitrarily picked. Okay, fine. Um, all right. Um, all right, so think, and so for the groups, remember the size, um, never less than four, never more than six, so, but ideally five or six people in your group. Um, and sometimes if you have only a group of four, you'll get uh, assigned somebody. Um, but yeah, five or six is, is sort of the number that we need. Okay, so I have another question for you. So one of the things that's really interesting or I think really neat about the, the whole program with FIAS is that they have all of the presentations uh, with a poster and then the groups sit around the posters and industry comes through and talks to them um and and they're all together but they're in you know they're they're in erc and the new shaw building and over in um, ace um obg building um that is a possibility that we could be we could do that with them so all engineering together or we could do it in the evening that we did this year where we have sort of a uh, a nuclear evening um does it and 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 then we have the zirconium ring and and we would do that um probably at the very end of exams as opposed to the start but we're not sure on the dates yet do people have a preference one way or the other? Nuclear evening? Okay. So if if you, would anybody want to also, if we had a nuclear evening, um, we would set it up. So Benjamin, your point, we would set it up probably that you, you would be encouraged, but maybe you don't have to, but for your entire group, but I would encourage you because it's really, really good experience to, to sit there and ask um answer questions you could we'll set it up so that you could also be part of the the engineering the fias fias um uh, afternoon as well so we might do you might get two so you might have to tie it you know you might have to get dressed up uh twice but maybe not um okay any other questions uh yes in um Industry members would come to the nuclear evening as well, but they would only be nuclear industry, uh, probably, radiation and nuclear. Whereas industry that comes to the FAS day is industry from all over the place. And if it's big enough, you know, we might invite the newspapers and, you know, maybe we'll get the mayor to come and then there's huge, enormous prizes for the best, the best group, that sort of thing. So we might do it that way, to be honest just so that you get the opportunity. Um, so the way it worked this year, FIAS had, had a group um, all in all at the same time, and then people were wandering around and then there was a prize for the best group, first, second, and third. We might do that so that if, if you know, we would encourage you to be part of that and then you might, you might be able to win the prize. And it would be good because we would love to have first, second, third go to um, Fesnes groups instead of um, fias but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it in uh when is it not until um uh march april next year so we don't have to worry about that yet okay any other questions so okay, another question then how many uh how many do we have uh 
about, wow, about 25 of you, right? Okay, so how many of you are working this summer? Um, so working this summer or, okay, I'm assuming most of you, are most of you working in the industry? OPG, yes, okay, that's what I figured. Okay, so, um, And you're all reading your emails. I don't know yet if Canvas will be, if we'll be able to post the topics on Canvas, but we'll email them to you. Um, and Nadine, you have the, the the class email list, right? I can secure that, yes. Ah, oh, lovely, lovely. <laughs> okay. Lockheed, oh, wow. All right, any any questions? How's, we, how's everyone doing with COVID anyway? Are you sick of it? Are you are you surviving? Hmm. Hey, by the way, it I know COVID really sucks, but we're finding that some of the industry, I mean, industry is hiring like crazy, right? Like nuclear is definitely the the, the darling of the employment sector. But industry is, you know, we were kind of worried about industry saying, well, you know, whew, students um, going to school during COVID and all that. But industry is actually seeing it as as much of a plus as a, as a negative in that, um, you know, you've had to learn to be independent and put up with, you know, crummy conditions and all of that. And, and so far, we're seeing that industry appreciates that. So I know it sucks, but uh, hopefully it won't be hope it doesn't look to be causing any any grief to your potential um, hiring ability. So some good news, I guess. Um, oh, okay. So when the projects are posted, um, you pick one and then you, you know, you basically contact the professor and it's kind of first come first serve. But we're going to do our best to make sure that all the projects are good. So that, um, you know, um, because you may quite, there's a good chance you won't get your first choice if, you know, although it looks like, it looks like we're going to need more groups than we thought, but that's okay. Um, so we'll try and come up with some good topics, but yeah, so the, the professor will, will confirm with you by email who, who's in the group and what your topic is. Yeah, as long as, um, Zoe, as long as the professor is Proats or Harville or me, and I know most of you don't know me because I'm not, and I don't. Um, but if 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 you can convince Professor Harville or or Froats, then then you're away to the races. So previously, it was spread across the faculty, right? We had way more people who were supervising, um, but this this year uh capstone is actually counting as a as a course so there's fewer fewer supervisors um but yeah we're keeping the better ones wow except for me but for Froats and, and harville you can contact them so keegan five or six members per group okay ideally Oh, yeah, right. Hey, so if, if somebody wants a group of Africa or Asia, does anybody have a preference for a country in Africa or a country in Asia? Doesn't matter. We're going to flip a coin. Uh, okay. Um, anything else, Nadine? Uh, just a friendly reminder, I just put actually the link um, for the capstone thesis application. So we're hoping to get all those in by May 16th so that we can send out the decisions in mid-June. So just a friendly reminder about that. And I put the link in there so students can access it and bookmark it um, or just refer back to the email invitation as well. Okay. Yeah. But thank you, Dr. Hornwick, for giving us all that information. It was definitely, I'm sure... Oh, yeah, as Zoe mentioned, thank you for the information. It was definitely helpful. I'm sure the students really enjoyed that. 
um, and learning about it. Um, and yeah, thank you all for coming. I know, again, it was such a great afternoon and evening. So um, I hope you get to go out and enjoy the rest of it. And um, I'll leave the last words to you, Dr. Hornwick. No, thanks. <laughs> thanks to you, Nadine and Carrie, and, and thanks to everyone showing up. And you know, everybody wants the Leafs to watch the Leafs game. Look at that. It, we're almost perfectly I'm on watching. time. <laughs> I will be watching it. Leave well. before. No, sorry, Mark. <laughs> Maybe, but. All right. So all I'll right. see you all in September and I'll bring cookies. Hey, thanks, everybody. Thank you for joining. And feel free to ask um, or email Academic Advising if you have any questions. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, and guys. feel free to email me as well. I'll put in my email. At, well, you'll figure it out. This is a test. You're in fourth year. You're going to be able to figure <laughs> out what my email address is. All right. Good night. Okay. Good night. Good night, everybody. So we still have a few students here. Um, did you have any questions that you'd like to still ask? I mean, you can definitely feel free to do so now if that's the case. I think you're probably just free to stop recording and we can close off the meeting if nobody has any questions. Perfect. Yeah, let me stop recording and then uh, I'll just make sure to.